On today's episode of Dream Meanings, why is everyone dressed in costumes? To find out what this may mean in a dream. Do loved ones come back to give us closure after passing, or is it just all in our minds? Could the mouth monster in a dream be a warning about a friend's actions? And when bears attack in a dream, what exactly does it mean? Those dreams and more we'll discuss on this episode of Dream Meanings. 1-800-606-7193 is our phone number here at Dream Meanings. You can also write in on the website, which is dreamingradio.com. D-R-E-A-M-I-N-G-R-A-D-I-O.com to uh, submit your dream to us. We may use it on a future episode of the program. And a reminder, if you like this thing, if you like this show, uh, make sure you uh, you press subscribe on the uh, on the show's page on iTunes, on Stitcher, on uh, Spotify. Links are up right there, so you can easily just click right over to that on your device or on your computer at uh, dreamingradio.com. That greatly helps us uh, grow the show and helps make it uh, a better a better experience for everybody because more people find it, more people like it, the, the bigger and better we can get uh, this program. So please, uh, if you like it, that's how we ask you, you to support it by subscribing. So thank you for that in advance. Let's go to our first caller of the day at 1-800-606-7193. Hi, you're on Dream Meetings. Hey, guys. Derek Spradling here again. I called in a while back on the Blueprints episode with a dream that was conjured up by the ghost frequency. And I got some really awesome input on that episode. I feel like it's been a while since that episode, but also feel like I just sent that in. But anyway, I'm here with a with another dream, a dream up. It rare comes to a time when I can actually remember a dream. Uh, but I feel like this dream I really should hold on to. Now, before I get into it, I am visually impaired, blind. And all my life I've been going to blind schools. Why is this important? Because this is one of those dreams where I am returned to a blind school, although in the dream, for some reason, I don't know where this place is. It's not TSB or any place I've been since, Tennessee School for the Blind, or any place I've been since, but it's a new place, and the dream starts me off in the room, in my bedroom in the place, because normally at these places, it's like a, it's kind of like a college campus where you have dorms and stuff, and <clears throat> I have, uh, I, it's start, the dream starts me off in this room. I'm watching South Park on TV, and uh, my roommate comes in. He's loud, and he's bubbly, and kind of annoying, to be honest. But the roommate is nobody in my real life. Um, there's a weird gimmick going on in the dream at the school that I was allegedly at, where every... Every student had a costume, a.k.a. a mascot, that represented them in some way. Mine was like this hooded figure with uh, blue hair and an owl's face. My bouncy, extroverted, annoying roommate was like this Pikachu like, it was a cross between, like, the, the Pikachu Pokemon and, like, where its mouth was it, and it, around its uh, chin was, like, uh, the bird from Sesame Street. Um, not sure why the masks were there, but I think it's part of the symbolism in the dream. I also think the roommate, although it might not be someone I know in real life, I think the roommate is like a combination of the person I used to be and like some of my friends. But anyway, it's not like the end of the dream we didn't get along. Like matter of fact, we put on our costumes and we had a rap battle. Like it was a really silly dream starting off. Like this is gonna be kinda weird of of a dream. But we're in our costumes, we're doing the rap battle. While I'm in my costume I'm I'm doing this Batman Begins, if you've ever seen that movie, kind of voice for my costume, mascot, whatever you want to call it. And 
my roommate's doing his own voice or, or going at it in this rap battle. Um, just killing time, waiting to go on this outing. Um, on the way to this outing, the typical being naked in a dream thing happens where halfway to the mall, I realize, crap, I'm not wearing any pants. So I make them turn around and go back and get clothes, but the dream skips that part. And I'm at the mall, properly closed, the, the mascot costumes are back in the dorm. This is this is where they're no longer in the dream. It's just us at the mall. We're teaming up with a group of normal sighted people, people with vision. And for some reason, our chauffeurs, or not chauffeurs, but the staff, the people that brought us out to the mall, to these people, um, were going out of the way to hide the fact that we were blind. Uh, This was a practice that wasn't heavily preached in my old school, but some people did it. You know, some people really wanted you, like if you went out in public places, not to reveal that you're blind at all possible costs. (laughs) But anyway, um, that's pretty much where the dream ends. Um, just me getting angry that I have to forget that I'm I have to pretend that I'm not blind because I'm I hate pretending that I'm something that I'm not. But anyway, the dream pretty much ends there. Um, but uh, what's going on in my life? I'm just looking for a job. I'm just seeking employment. I'm going, this dream happened prior to a Tuesday when I normally go to this place called the Clovenhook Center and I seek advice on getting a job from my counselor. Um, And the night before, I was playing the South Park video game, which explains, uh, you know, the dream kicking off with me watching South Park. Uh, But, uh, couple of questions I have for you. One, what do you think the costumes mean? And two, why is it that each student had some resemblance? Each student's costume had some resemblance to a bird. Like mine had an owl face. My roommate's was like a Pikachu face, but it it, it, which is like a mouse, but the the mouse was like a beak. Every every student had some semblance of a bird on their costume. Uh, I think that's a pretty – the bird is some – huge significant part of the dream here and so is the roommate like i said the roommates across between like my past self and a few of my friends but anyway your guys's input or tony your input on what you think that all means i know i know the uh i theorize that the costumes are kind of some vague representation of of our of the the hooded the hooded humanoid figure with blue hair and the owl face is kind of the person I am now, and the Pikachu Tweety Bird uh, thing is who I used to be. Uh, but I think there's more to it than that. Um, I, I really feel like this is a dream I don't need to let go of. I feel like this is a dream I need to get some kind of insight in. And I don't need to forget because it seems really loaded with symbolism. Anyway, what do you think? And I really enjoy the show so far. And uh, I'll continue listening. And I'm an APP. And keep up the good work. All right, guys. Have a good one. There's a lot of symbolism in there, definitely. Um, in in my opinion, what I think the the main thing we should be looking at here is uh, is the costumes, um, and, and not necessarily what the costumes are, um, but more so just the concept of these people wearing costumes. What does it mean? Why is that there? Um, costumes typically, uh, when you have that in a dream, uh, it, it's meaning that that inside of you, you feel like you're kind of putting on uh, a different version of yourself, a facade uh, towards others. Um, so it's kind of something that, that occurs when 
you're you're not really revealing your true self if you are maybe kind of being a fake version of yourself or trying to be a version of yourself that you feel others will like um that others will um want to be around more a more appealing version of yourself and it may not necessarily even be you know the, the whole thing where you're striving to be the better version of you sometimes it's just I need to be this version if I'm going to get along with people and and have relationships and that can be frustrating I remember feeling like that quite a bit as a child uh, with kids um, but that's that's typically what um, costumes indicate in a dream uh, not really being completely honest with yourself and and those around you I think that that is uh, really how the the weird roommate character in there where it's kind of a mixture of other people it's kind of a mixture of you uh, in the past and the present and the future i think that that all ties into that and it's all part of your subconscious trying to examine uh the version of you that is best that you want to be because it seems like it's kind of a mixed up uh mixed up mixture <laughs> is that even a, a correct way of saying that uh of yourself and i think there may be some self-examining that you need to do of uh looking into yourself and how you're portraying yourself to others and how, are you being honest with yourself because ultimately uh to to move forward to be happy to be healthy that's that's the most important person right there is you and make sure that you are being honest with yourself on on how you're being around others and that's where you're going to find the most happiness in life is when you're able to be yourself and others are, are able to accept you for who you are so i think that may be what some of that uh, meaning and symbolism was in that dream. Thank you for writing in and sharing that experience with us. I do greatly appreciate that. The phone number here at Dream Meetings, 1-800-606-7193 is our phone number to uh, call in and share your phone number, your, your phone number, call in and share your dream with us. I, I don't need your phone number, just need your dream. <laughs> and uh, also you can write in on the website at dreamingradio.com. You can uh, write in your story uh, or your dream there. We may use it on a future episode of the program. Priscilla writes into us. Hey, guys, absolutely love your podcast. Enjoy hearing everyone's stories. Now to the point. My father passed away almost five years ago on December 30th. He was the one person I felt completely safe and comfortable with. He was and is my biggest love and confidant. When he passed away from a heart attack, as you can imagine, I was completely devastated. I was in such a dark place I didn't know how to get out of. I always told my father I loved him very much, but I never verbally told him just how much he meant to me and how big of a role he played in my life and sanity. When people use the figure of speech, he, she is my heart, it wasn't a figure of speech to me. My dad literally owned my heart, and until he died, I didn't realize the extent of my connection and love for him. After his death, I spent months and months crying and just angry that this angel that was my father had been taken from me. No goodbyes, no last word, nothing. I managed to get through my days, but the literal heartache was consistent. I felt as if I had a ton of bricks on top of my chest, and nothing I did made it better. I talked to myself, hoping he'd be able to hear my thoughts. I remember having nightmares, and in my nightmares, a serial killer would be chasing me. And he was the person's arms, and I'd end up in that I would feel safe. Easter was coming up, and I remember thinking of how devastated my family would be spending Easter without him. I think of how sad and how I had to uh, relive the fact that he was not there. He was extremely close to my siblings as well, so it was a house full of depressed zombies. One night before falling asleep, I was thinking to, making, uh, thinking to myself of ways to make the day better, just something that would make everyone a bit more happy, even though I knew it wasn't possible. During those thoughts, I fell asleep. In my dream, me and my family were at this beautiful church. We all sat together and listened to the sermon of the day. Me and my mom walked out after church and stood on the side near the doors waiting for the rest of my family to walk out so we can go for lunch. As me and my mom were waiting, I see my father walking out as well. Now, my father was always dressed to impress when he went out. I mean, dry clean pressed pants, shirts, shiny boots, beautiful cowboy hat, and always smelled great. As he's walking out, I see him, and he's dressed as he usually was, very nice and well put together. I could even smell his cologne. We made eye contact, and he looked straight into my eyes. He walked past me and my mom, but never took his eyes off me, and I never took mine off his. He stops a few feet ahead and removes his hat and nods his head in a bow type of way, as if he was signaling everything was fine. 
The feeling of comfort I remember feeling was insane. That nod spoke a million words to me in my dream, and I remember feeling this crazy release of negative energy. He put his hat back on and he walked away without saying a single word. I remember waking up crying because it felt so real. For a split second, I had seen, smelled, and had this conversation with him, even though nothing was said. Until this day, I still feel that was his way of telling me he was fine. For months, I cried because I was not sure if he was okay, and also because he wasn't physically here. After that dream, I felt this weird closure and this confirmation that he'll always be with us. I find comfort in knowing one day I'll see him again, because despite anything, I miss him terribly. So grieving obviously was going on at the time of the stream. My question is, do you believe this is a way of the dead communicating with the living, or do you think our mind allows us such dreams as a coping mechanism? I think there's a mixture. Uh, personally, I think there are some times where uh, there literally is ways of the communication uh, from the other side to us. I think sometimes it is our minds coping. I mean, it's hard to say, and I'm not going to judge whether yours was uh, a, a real visit from the other side or if it was simply your mind coping. It, it, it very well could have been either, quite honestly. Um, sometimes there is evidence uh, that we get, uh, especially on our other program, uh, Real Ghost Stories Online, where someone has a, a dream uh, of a visitation of some sort, and then there is something in the room that maybe wasn't there before, or a message conveyed that there's no way uh, you would have known about uh, knowing, and it's it's later confirmed by another family member who's the other one, only other one who knew it, but somehow you got this information through a dream. There's sometimes interesting ways of confirming there's something else going on here beside just the coping mechanism. Obviously, our brains are, are always trying to work through things and try to essentially right the ship and, and get you back to a better place mentally. Um, so that is certainly going to be going on, uh, but I think it can happen both ways. So that's that's my opinion on that. Um, not everything is paranormal by any means. Not everything is just completely coping or or just psychological. Uh, I, uh, as you know, I believe there's a, a mixture that that can go on, and that's what makes some of this so uh, so confusing <laughs> sometimes uh, with uh, with dreams. Thank you for writing in and sharing your experience with us. I do greatly appreciate that. One eight hundred six zero six seventy one ninety three. The phone number at Dream Meetings to share your dream with us. The website is dreamingradio.com. Share your dream with us there, and we may use it on a future episode of the program. Let's go to another caller. Hi, you are on Dream Meetings. Hey Tony, this is Jessica. Um, I wanted to call you guys and share my dream, although. I think this happened in real life, um, but I asked my mom if she remembers this happening to me when I was um, in elementary school, and she says she doesn't. She thinks it's a dream, so you can either play it on this one or you can play it on your other show. All right, so here it goes. So um, I grew up in, well, our first apartment was in Boleo, California, and this is during my elementary school years. Now... A little bit of a backstory. Um, I had a pretty hectic uh, childhood. Um, mom wasn't really there that much. Um, dad was real abusive um, mentally and physically. I got tormented a lot um, as a kid. So I and I was an only child. So I was very much. I was a social child, but I was I was a loner too. Um, anyways, in our apartment, um, I had my own bedroom and I hated this room. I hated it so much that I actually slept with my mom till the sixth grade when we finally moved out. I mean, I absolutely refused to sleep in this room. I thought it was haunted. Um, the reason why I thought it was haunted was, uh, back in the eighties, there was this doll and it came out. It was kind of like Teddy Ruxpin. Like you put the tape in and she would talk. Her name was Cricket. Well, I had one of those. And one night when I um, was sleeping in my room, she sat up all by herself and just stared at me through, you know, she was sitting in the closet and she was just staring at me from my bed. Um, I, w I was absolutely terrified. I had to get up and shut the closet. 
And another time, um, my closet was open, and my night I had, my mom finally got me a nightlight so I'd sleep in there. And I saw this shadow person, but it looked like this little monster. But it, I don't know, it looked like it was handing me flowers or something, like it was trying to befriend me. I didn't know, and I personally did not care. This, it, it really freaked me out. So I never slept in my room. I only went in there, changed my clothes. I mean, I didn't even go in there at night. So the way that our apartment was set up, um, you first walk through the door and you look to the left and there's this long hallway. So my bedroom was on the right, bathroom was on the left, and then straight down the middle um, to the back was my mother's room. And then you look uh, straight ahead and there was a living room and the wall kind of came out a little bit. Um, But, you know, you had to kind of look around it to see down the hallway. So here's the dream. Um, I had a dream. It was a Saturday morning, and every Saturday morning, my mother would usually be on the phone um, with our relatives that lived in Illinois. So whether this was real or in the dream, I'm not, to me, I'm pretty sure it was real, but you be the judge. So it was every, it was just like any other Saturday morning. I'm, I got up, and when I was walking down the hallway, I was passing my room, and I heard this little girl's voice say, play with me. So I start running down the hallway, and I'm, you know, like an imaginary friend because I didn't physically see her. I just heard the voice, and it sounded friendly. So I was, our apartment wasn't that big. But so I ran down the hallway, ran out um, to the left where the living room and the dining room was, and I saw my mother sitting at the table talking on the phone like she always is. And I remember running around the table, chasing this little girl that wasn't there. And, you know, my mom, she was lifted up the cord for me to, you know, run under, and she didn't say anything to me. So I ran around the, the dining room table and ran around the living room. Well, then I get to the wall that kind of comes out a little bit further than um, the other wall did so I can peer around it to look down the hallway. So I stopped right there, and I looked down the hallway, and coming out of my room at the bottom of the doorway was a hand, and it it only went up to the wrist. And there was – and this hand came out, and – you know, did like the come here thing with the finger. And I just remember looking at that and like I just passed out, like dropped dead like on my back and passed out. And then my mom rushed over to me and she says, oh, my God, are you all right? Are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I, I did you see her? And she's like, see who? So that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I've, I mean, I've had – weird dreams all my life, but I distinctly remember that I was, like, awake, and my mom was actually like, you know, what's wrong with you? Like, I don't know, that just doesn't happen in dreams. So, um, but, yeah, I I never, like I said, up until the sixth grade, I refused to sleep in that bedroom. Um, I would sleep on the couch. I don't care if it was, like, at night, and it sucked because I had to go past my room just to use the bathroom, I mean, I would run like there was no tomorrow, hurry up, go to the bathroom and leave. So I don't know what was going on with that. I'm, I have a feeling maybe if it was a dream, it was just my fear of that room. I don't know, but, um, yeah, I never slept in there again. So, um, that's my dream. I actually have one more dream. Um, this was when I was in high school and, It's not super graphic, but it's very quick. So um, I had a dream that I was in a gymnasium with a whole bunch of people. And there were these people at the front of the, um, in front of us, in the front of this group of people that had these robes on. And they were saying that they were part of some cult or something. I don't know. But um, they were basically like, well, join us or, you know, or else. So I was like, no, I'm not going to join your cult. 
out of nowhere, they open up the doors to the gymnasium and all these, I'm terrified of snakes, by the way, all these snakes and wild bears, like, start running through the doors and everybody's trying to, you know, run like hell to get the hell away from these things. Well, I ended up getting tackled by a bear. And the bear, you know, got me on my back and, and reached up and slashed across my stomach. And I remember always thinking that you're not supposed to feel pain and dreams, but I felt it. I mean, I was just like completely hunched over. I'm bleeding out and I'm like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. And, um, and then when I woke up from the dream, I happened to look down and I actually was bleeding. I, this doesn't sound good, but I actually started my period. So, but it was really bizarre that I would have this dream about getting hurt in the dream, and then I wake up, and then there's blood, and I'm just like, oh, my God, it's, like, super freaky. Um, yeah, that was in high school. Times weren't any better for me there. Um, pretty chaotic, hanging with the wrong crowd. So, I don't know. What, whatever you think it is, go for it. You can try to analyze it. But, um, yeah, that's my story. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for calling in and sharing your uh, your dreams with us. The first one, I, I really think, uh, just has a lot to do with you being a child and trying to reason uh, whether or not you should be in that room or not. Uh, the hand, you know, symbolizing, uh, you know, or, or pointing to you to, to come here. It's your mind trying to cope with, should I be in this room? Should I not be in this room? Uh, do I have the courage to be there? Is it a place I want to be? I think that's that's really what it came down to, is just you're, you're, you're trying to work through the idea of, of staying in that room or not the other one the bear um when you have a, a bear in your dream or some sort of forceful animal that's attacking you uh, it, it tends to have a lot to do with uh uncontrolled uh, anger or aggression things of that nature a feeling of kind of being uh trapped so you know when when would if fight or flight uh it, it's it's pretty much you know you feel like okay i'm in fight mode no matter what um, and it denotes kind of being in a threatening situation, overwhelming situation, um, may have something to do with a relationship that you're in at the time, or just a relationship you're having with people at the time, uh, and, and some controlling, uh, issues, uh, there, whether that, uh, they are overly controlling or, uh, possessive, if you will. So, uh, you saying you're not in the best of places at that time with the best of people at the time, uh, I could very easily see those two being connected with the bear. Um, and, and just that, that point in your life. Um, so that, that just seems to be kind of a reflection of what was going on around you at the time. Uh, and then, uh, denoting itself in your dreams, uh, in these, in these ways. Thank you for calling in and sharing your dream with us. Let's go to another letter that uh, comes into us. Uh, Elena writes in, hello, sent my uh, dream in to the, uh, the ghost story category by mistake, as I did not see the link for dream meetings until much later. I've copied and pasted my dream here. Okay. Hello, I'm a huge fan of your podcasts, bigger fan of, the, of your episodes about dreams. I want to share a dream that I had back in May of this year. It stuck with me for months. I've always had strange dreams, but this one has made me feel uh, made me feel unsettled. In my dream, I was at a park with a friend. It was nighttime. The park had a cement ground, but there were patches of grass which were enclosed by a wire fence. In one of the enclosed areas, we saw a very tall humanoid figure. It had massive claws for its feet and hands. Its body was lanky compared to its arms and legs, and I couldn't see its face, but I knew it saw us. My friend kept calling to it despite my protests, and it started to come towards us. It reached the gate, and my friend kept provoking it. I was able to get closer, a closer look at its face and saw that the humanoid only had a massive mouth, which took over its whole face. It had no eyes, nose, or ears. When its mouth opened, it was like a flower, but instead of petals, it had teeth on each flap. It had mucus and saliva dripping off. My friend realized it was dangerous, and we started to run away. It chased us, and my friend and I split up in different directions. It caught her after a while, and I turned back to find her being eaten alive while screaming. I then woke up at three in the morning and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. So at the time, I had midterm exams at school and was dealing with personal 
struggles. What does a humanoid figure represent? Could it be a physical representation of my stress that my mind created? Well, let's talk about the uh, the monster aspect of this dream for a minute. When you have a dream about a monster, a lot of times uh, it's it's about uh, something within you, uh, something that you find uh, not so great, something repulsive, uh, something unsettling, something uh, ugly, some sort of fear that uh, that you may have. Um, and so there is some repression there. Um, so you may have been having some uh, repressed emotions. Could it have been part of you know the exams that you were going and going on and 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 some of that anxiety coming through? Sure, you know those sort of things can essentially fill the the water tank up a little bit high, and then a lot of things all kind of spill over together. But let's talk about the connection here with the friend in the dream, because sometimes when you can do some connection of. Uh, the monster and the friend and what was going on in the dream, uh, it can uh, lead to some answers about uh, what some of these fears are. And it's kind of, it, it, it may feel a little obvious here, um, but I'm wondering if there are some concerns about uh, being around this friend, about uh, the situations that your friend may get you in and your mind kind of playing out. She's not making great decisions you know, she's uh, <laughs> sitting there aggravating the monster uh, and the fact that the monster just has a mouth. Um, I'm wondering if that has something to do with a fear or a concern uh, you had about that friend and, 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 and that friend putting you in uncomfortable and, and not so great situations or settings uh, with her actions or choices. That would be where I would be examining the meaning of the dream. I think that, like I, like I said before, the, uh, the exams and things like that, anytime you have a, a stressor in your life, it can aggravate other stressors that may not otherwise be so much on the surface, but it just kind of brings, you know, that, uh, that bathtub full of water up to the spilling point, And then whatever goes over the edge goes over the edge. Um, and I think that may be some of what was going on here where that stressor of the exams pushed everything up to the surface and really kind of made things a little more visible altogether. Um, so I would be taking a look at that and that relationship and, and trying to examine uh, what your true feelings are there and, and then following through and being honest with yourself about that as far as how, uh, how to handle that relationship and how to handle that, uh, that friendship and, and to what depth you want uh, to be connected there to a person uh, if they are, in fact, uh, making you feel uh, not so great or putting you in places that you don't necessarily think you should have to be in. That would be my take on that dream. Thank you for writing in and sharing that with us. Do greatly appreciate it. If you want to share your dream with us, you can do it, and we may use it on a future episode of the program. 1-800-606-7193 is our phone number. You can write it on the website, dreamingradio.com. Be sure to press subscribe on whatever platform it is you are listening to us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Spotify. We're all over the place. Uh, just look us up. Dreamingradio.com is a website. Dream Meanings is the name of the show. When you uh, find us, press subscribe. That greatly helps us grow this thing called Dream Meetings. So please do, uh, do that and help us uh, stay on the air. That wraps up today's episode of Dream Meetings. Thanks for listening. I'm Tony Bruschi. Have a great day. Talk to you next time on Dream Meetings.